quiz two. So we'll start off with projectile problems. So a projectile problem, we have some object with initial velocity v0, okay, and y up is, uh, y is the up direction, positive y is the up direction, positive x is horizontal like that. Okay, so in the x direction we have no acceleration, so we have constant velocity. The equation we use is dx is equal to the initial velocity v0x or it's equal also to the average velocity x in the x direction. And so we have formulas like x minus x0 is, and there's no acceleration, so we just get v0x times delta t. Now, for the y direction, we have ay is negative 9.80 meters per second squared, so we have constant acceleration in the y direction. v0y is v0y plus ay times delta t. That's one of the formulas, one of the three useful ones y minus y zero is one half a y delta t squared plus v zero y delta t. That's another useful one. And if you don't uh, want to use delta t, then we have v y squared, the final velocity squared, minus v zero y squared, the initial velocity squared is equal to two a y times y minus y zero. Now for these projectile problems, the only connection between the x and y motion is that delta t is the same for the two cases. So the first step in this recipe for solving projectile problems is you break the initial velocity into components. We have the x component, the y component, so vx is magnitude of v times the cosine of theta, theta is the angle from horizontal, vy is v times sine of theta. And then the next step is to decide which direction x or y has enough information so that you can solve for delta t. Set up the kinematic uh, or the motion equations for that direction, and then find delta t. And then, if necessary, step three, use delta t that you found and use it to solve the kinematic uh, equations for the other direction. Let's do an example. A baseball is thrown with speed 20 meters per second at an angle 30 degrees above horizontal from a height of 2 meters above gra level ground. How far does the baseball travel horizontally before hitting the ground? Okay. So first step is to get the uh, components of the velocity in the x and y directions. So we have 30 degrees here. The x component is 20, the magnitude times the cosine of 30, and we get 17.3. The y component is 20 times the sine of, of 30, so that's 10.0. Now in the y direction, um, by the way, because the, the clock stops when it hits the level horizontal ground, the the delta t will be determined by the y motion in this problem. Okay, so we start off with the y direction. y minus y is 0. It drops 2 meters from the original height, so it's minus 2.0. a y is negative 9.8 meters per second squared from gravity. And v0 y, we've calculated that v0 y is 10 meters per second. And this is enough to solve for delta t. So we use y minus y zero is one half a y times delta t squared plus v zero y delta t. Put in the numbers for y minus y zero, for a y, and for v zero y, and then we simplify. Bring this guy, these guys all to the left side. And we get four point nine delta t squared minus ten delta t minus two is equal to zero. Okay, and then use the quadratic equation a x squared plus b x plus c is equal to zero x is equal to minus b plus or minus squared b squared minus 4ac over 2a. And then we plug in for minus b is, is 10, plus or minus square root of minus 10 squared, minus 4 times a times c, divided by 2a. And this will come out to 10 plus or minus 11.8 over 9.8 seconds. And that comes out to, this is an physical value, and comes out to 2.2 seconds. Now, let's figure out the, how far it goes in the x direction. That's the final step. So we know delta t. We just calculated it's 2.2 seconds. Okay. And so we have that the delta x. Oh, well, okay. V0x is 17.3 meters per second. So x minus x0 is V0x times delta t, 17.3 times 2.2. Okay, just constant velocity. How far does it go? 17.3 times 2.2. And that comes up to 38 meters. 
Okay, next topic is relative velocity. So let's say object A has some velocity VA as seen by a stationary observer. And let's say uh, object B has velocity VB as seen by a stationary observer. Then the velocity of B relative to A and VB B relative to A is just VB minus VA. Or we can say VB, the velocity of B, is equal to the velocity of A plus the extra piece for the velocity of B relative to A. Okay. Now, then we talked about forces. So force F has units of newtons. One newton is one kilogram meters per second squared. We talked about the net force. Net force is the sum of all forces on an object. So Newton's first law, if the net force on an object is zero, then acceleration is zero, and the velocity is constant. So F net equals to zero means acceleration is zero, means the velocity is constant. All of these are equivalent. Newton's second law is the most important one. Uh, it's F net is equal to the mass times the acceleration. Okay, then we talked about uniform circular motion. So in order for an object to go around a circle with a uniform speed, notice that the speed remains the same, but the velocity changes direction. Okay. In order for this particle, this object to go around the circle, there needs to be an acceleration pointing towards the center of the circle, and that's what's called the centripetal acceleration. And the magnitude of the centripetal acceleration is v squared divided by r, and the direction is pointing towards the center of the circle. So the circumference of the circle is 2 pi r, the period, let's call it capital T, we can count up the period from the circumference and the speed by doing the distance, 2 pi r, the circumference, divided by the speed, d. The frequency is 1 over the period, if you need that. Okay. Then we talked about the linear to angular correspondence. So in the linear case, we have this velocity v, the meters per second. The angular velocity was omega, one, that's inverse seconds, so radians per second. For the acceleration, we had a. The acceleration is meters per second squared. For the angular case, we had alpha, uh, which is the angular acceleration, units of radians per second squared or one over second squared. So I, I don't know if I said this out loud. This, this is omega. The symbol for angular velocity is omega. Now, so when we have constant acceleration, uh, constant angular acceleration, we can use the corresponding equations. So here's the linear case, v is equal to 0 plus a delta t. Over for the angular case, we have omega is equal to omega 0 plus alpha delta t. Linear case, delta t is v0 delta t, t plus 1 half a delta t squared. Angular case, we have delta theta, the angle, is equal to omega 0 delta t plus 1 half alpha delta t squared. Linear case, we have v squared minus v0 squared is equal to 2a delta x. For the angular case, we have omega squared, that's the final angular velocity, minus omega 0 squared, the initial angular velocity squared, is equal to 2 alpha delta theta. And then we also have the average velocity, uh, v bar, is equal to 1 half v0 plus v. And we also have the average angular velocity is 1 half v0 plus, uh, sorry, 1 half omega 0 plus omega. So omega bar is equal to 1 half omega 0 plus omega. So we solve these constant acceleration, angular acceleration problems much the same way as we do the constant acceleration problems. Now we can also relate angular quantities for motion around a circle to their corresponding straight line properties. So here's the arc length delta s. This is the angle delta theta in radians. If you have a radius capital R, then this little length here, this arc length, is just delta S is equal to R times delta theta. So now if I'm going to calculate the linear velocity, how fast the speed is around going around the circle, so it will be delta S over delta T. So then I can do V is equal to delta S over delta T because delta S is R delta theta. We get R delta theta over delta T. But delta theta over delta T is omega, the angular speed. And so we get the result that V is equal to the radius R times the angular speed omega. Now, we already know there is this radial component of acceleration pointing inwards. Uh, v AR is equal to V squared over R. So then we know that V, okay, so we just said that V is equal to R omega. Uh, 
that's the last page. So we can write AR is equal to V squared over R, replace the V with R omega, becomes R squared omega squared over R, that becomes R omega squared. So I can write this in triple acceleration as R times omega squared. Now, if the speed is changing with time and it's not uniform circular motion, then we also have this tangential acceleration going tangent to the circle. Okay, so if it's speeding up, it's going, and the tangential acceleration is in the direction of motion. If it's slowing down, it's opposite to the direction of motion. Okay, and the tangential acceleration is just the time derivative of the speed. Now, since d is equal to r omega and r is not changing with time, then I can write rt as r times alpha. The derivation is just the time derivative of r omega, and so we get r times d omega dt, but the time derivative of the angular velocity is angular acceleration. So the formula is that the tangential acceleration is r times the angular acceleration. So if you have any questions, please uh, ask the student supervising today's lecture.